Hey guys, Brian here with another Kickstarter preview for you. This time I have a great pick up and deliver game that takes place in the high seas. This is Cargo, Dead in the Water. This, my friends, is the massive map of Cargo Dead in the Water. If I can figure out how to zoom out. And I still can't quite fit the whole thing in my camera lens. So I'm just going to give you a nice little panoramic view of what's going on here. And I'll explain uh, how the game it works. First of all, let me explain that this is uh, just a prototype copy. This is actually one of their convention copies of the game that they actually use at conventions, obviously, to demo the game. I, they were kind enough to actually send me one of their copies that I have to sadly send back, but I will gladly send it back because this is an awesome game and I really want them to be able to promote it. In Cargo Dead in the Water, you are manage a fleet of ships trying to get goods from one side of the, uh, the ocean to the other side of the ocean and vice versa. Uh, what I have here is I have the ships for a two-player game. So in a two-player game, each player is going to get three ships. Um, if you play in a uh, three, four, or five player game, you're only going to get two ships each. Otherwise, it just gets really, really crowded. So you'll take your ships, and they're going to go on the different ports here. And they can go anywhere. Ships can share ports. Then you'll get a hand of cards. I'll show you some of the different cards here. First thing that you're going to look for is... One of the most important things are these are the commodities. These are the different things that you will be exporting and delivering to various places in the world. So let's just say you have this hand of cards. If you go to a place that's exporting sugar and you have two sugar cards, you can trade in these to, let's find a place that's exporting sugar here. I believe way, nope, that's importing. Where's exporting? Exporting is way over here. Let's go over here. So Bridgetown over here. So they are exporting sugar. Because you can tell because it matches the card here. See, so the card, put that in the camera here. So the card, white card, white sugar. And you look down here and you see the little white barrel, which of course is the same as the card. So that way you know that Bridgetown is exporting sugar. So if you've got these two cards here, zoom back out, add zoom in. So if you zoom out, um, you can take these two cards, you can turn those in, and then you can get two sugar cubes. And you can plunk those into your ship, saying that you have two sugar on your ship, and then now you can take that across the world. On your turn, you can move up to five spaces in any direction that you want to. So where is sugar? Sugar's trying to go over here. Um, Looks like it's going either over to uh, Lisbon or it wants to go over here to Liverpool. Well, Lisbon's a little bit easier to get to, so let's just try to get to over here to Lisbon. So, let's show you how the movement is. It is on your turn. After you've loaded up your goods and everything, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, because that gets us real close, as close as possible. Well, five, you know, moves per turn, that isn't a lot. Well, you can also play on your turn, you can play some wind cards. For example, we have, you know, a high wind, and this will move your boat east, three extra spaces. Or we also have a high wind here, and this one is a west, um, three spaces. So, of course, in this case, we're going east, so if you wanted to, you could play this east card on your turn. And then one, two, three more spaces directly east with that card. Where the game gets interesting is, let's say, you know, I was the blue player here, and I'm just trying to get this sugar over here to Lisbon because, you know, they need some sweetener for whatever they need sweetener for over there. But the red player over here decides he's going to go, and he ends up landing right about there, which now puts his ship adjacent to mine. After all movement is done on your turn, if you are adjacent to another ship, you must have a little battle. The way battle takes place is all you need is to, it's die versus die. So the red player is going to roll a die, 
the blue player is going to roll a die, and the high one wins. So, let's just say, you know, this is the red player. Whoops. And they rolled a three. And the blue player here, ooh, they rolled a six. So, the blue player is successful in this battle. Back to six. And if the red player happened to have any cargo on his ship, which usually you take a difference between the numbers, which is three, if the red player had any cargo, the blue player could take up to three of those um, those crates as long as they have room for them. The blue player only has room for one thing, and the red player has nothing to actually take. When you do lose a battle, not only do you lose cargo, your ship becomes dead in the water. You put your little ship on that token. This signifies that this player cannot um, move this ship at all. And it'll be repaired at the end of their turn, but they'll lose that turn. They won't be able to use it that turn at all. You know, a die versus die battle, that's kind of very, very, you know, luck dependent. And, well, that's kind of boring. Well, to help yourself, if you are the player being attacked, the first thing you're allowed to do is you're allowed to play, you know, some cannon cards. So you can play like this double cannon card, which adds two to your roll. So if I was playing this and I was the defending player, whatever my roll is, I add two to that roll. Also, if you just really, really need to get that cargo where you need to go, you can play something like a Cowardly Retreat. Uh, Cowardly Retreat, what it does is you toss one of your cargo overboard to cowardly retreat three spaces in any direction. So you just take the sugar and you're like, hey, screw that sugar. One, two, three, and you keep on going. And of course, this just gets returned back to the pool of all the items. The way you win the game is you collect points. You have these little markers here that match the colors of your ship, and you're trying to get all the way over here to 25 points. Well, how do you earn points? Well, that's where this track comes in. Let me just move the whole camera here. And I will show you this track here. Move the cards over here. So this track goes from four items here have one point, three items have two points, and then two items are worth three points. Well, how is this determined? Ooh, that was interesting. Well, how do you determine this? Well, these tiles here are distributed randomly. You shuffle them at the beginning of the turn, beginning of the game, and then you place them out here one by one, starting at the bottom, and then you place them throughout, and that determines what the, the current value of the market is. But there is a way to even play with the market. You can play and adjust the market card. And just in the market, basically resets this entire thing, you shuffle it up, and then you redistribute all the things. So, you know, I'm taking this sugar over here to Lisbon, and sugar is only worth one. So if I play this adjust the market card, hopefully we can get sugar up here to a higher point value, which would be awesome. But, you know, you never know, it could just stay where it is. So that is pretty much the entirety of the game with one more fun thing. On your turn, if you see a ship out there that has some pretty cool goods on it, and there's just no way that you're going to be able to get to that ship, on your turn you can play a pirate attack card, which uh, means you hire some dastardly pirates and they're going to attack that ship. And that is just a simple roll to roll because they're not allowed to play any cards because they're not prepared for a pirate attack whoever is, and then you roll that. However, you do not get any goods with the pirate attack. So with the pirate attack, it's just, it'll damage their ship, they'll lose the goods, you don't gain them, but it's another way to try to stop somebody from, you know, getting some buku points. And that is cargo dead in the water. So as I said, that is just a, a production copy of the game, not the actual what the components or any of the board or anything is going to look like. It's just a mock-up to give you the general feel of the game. Uh, Cheese Block Games was kind of to send me that uh, copy so that way I could try it out, try it with my group, and just tell you about the game and show you the basics of how the game works. 
The game is a really, really fun pick up and deliver game. Um, I played it with four players and I played it with two players. I personally liked it better with the two players because there's a little bit more interaction, less downtime in between turns. Um, I do like that there's many ways to earn the victory points. You can, you know, if you're pulling the cards and you're getting the, the goods that are the high amount, you can definitely just, you know, pull those cards and they'll ship those goods back and forth, back and forth. But if you're just not pulling those cards, you have the opportunity to go, you know, and start, you know, going after some other ships and try to take their goods and then you're already halfway there to go ahead and ship those goods and, and earn the points that they would have earned otherwise. So it is a great game. I really like it. It's sad that I actually have to send this copy back, but I will be picking up a copy of it in the future because it is fantastic. So please make sure you look for it on Kickstarter. If you're already on Kickstarter and I happen to be there and you're watching the video there, go ahead and click. It's over here, I believe. No, it's over there. It's one of those sides. I don't know. And make sure you like, share, subscribe, and become a patron of Cloak and Maple. Links will be down below, as well as links for their uh, for Cheesebox Kickstarter of this fine game. Thanks.